Thank you. So I, today, what I want to share with you is something that happened to me, actually around four weeks ago it happened. I, words were said to me, but I never thought I would ever hear said to my face by another human being. And those words, they shattered my heart. And at the same time, they filled it with so much hope. And the whole experience renewed my commitment to the idea that I came to share with you today. But before I go there, I want to share with you why is it that I care so much. You know, I make I said that I started a few businesses. That's true. I want to tell you why I did that. You see, I tell everyone that I am a haunted person. I'm literally haunted. What haunts me? You heard it from Pierre, from Pierre earlier. He's from Senegal, so am I. What haunts me is the impossible stories, story after story after story after story of young people, my people, people like me, dying out there on the ocean, right now laying at the bottom of the ocean, serving as fish food. Do you really think that's the best we can do? To serve as fish food? And for those of them who are trying to migrate to Europe, because that's what it is all about, we're trying to migrate to Europe to find a job, going through Libya. Do you know what happens to us when we're trying to cross for Libya and we're trapped over there? Well, we're being sold as slaves for $300, maybe sometimes $500. Sometimes I hear stories of bodies that fall off an airplane. <laughs> Somebody hid in the landing gear of a plane or in the cargo section of a plane, and then you find them frozen to death. Wouldn't you be haunted if, like me, from the moment you were a little girl, you hear these stories and they keep repeating themselves over and over and over? Wouldn't you be haunted? That's my case. And at the same time, you know, as my people are dying, my culture is also dying. Here I said it. Because, you know, we have this cultural inferiority, which means that anything that comes from us is not good enough. But, you know, in my situation, and because I was raised, to criticize by creating. It's Michelangelo's. My father said, do not come to me with problems unless you thought of a couple alternatives. They don't have to be right, but I just want to know that you thought of something. So, I have this attitude in life. Something is wrong, find a way to fix it. And that's why I start the businesses that I start. There's usually consumer brands that have embedded in them the very best of my African culture. And what I do is it's all packaged, 21st century, world-class standard, and I bring that to one of the most sophisticated markets in the, in, the United, in the world, which is the U.S. First company was a beverage company, second one is a skincare company, the third one is launching next month, and they all have that in common. So, why are these people leaving? They're leaving because they have no jobs. They're leaving because where they are, there's no jobs. So, and then, the poverty that's really striking them is at the cause, root cause, of why they're leaving. Now, why are people poor? People are poor because they have no money. You have no money because you have no source of income. And for most of us, what is a source of income? For most of us, what is our source of income? What is it? Tell me. Jobs. Thank you. Where do jobs come from? Come from where? Businesses. Thank you. Now, if jobs is what fixes poverty, and jobs come from businesses, don't you think, especially if they come from small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, then don't you think, maybe for a second, that we should focus on making it easy for a small business person to start and run their business? Don't you think that it makes sense? Okay. Now, if you believe that it makes sense, then you tell me, you tell me why. Why is it that? When I look at the Doing Business Index ranking of a World Bank that ranks every country in the world as, in terms of how easy or hard it is to start a company, you tell me why African countries, all 50 of them, are basically at the bottom of that list. That's why we're poor. 
We're poor because it is literally impossible to do businesses in these countries of ours. Let me tell you what it means, because this, the, you know, the World Bank says that, but I want to tell you exactly what it means on the ground for someone like me. You know, I have a manufacturing facility in Senegal. We've been operating uh, with this last company for the past six months over there. Did you know that uh, for all my raw material that I can't find in the country, I have to pay a 45% tariff on everything that comes in? 45% tariff. Do you know that even to look for fine cardboards to ship my finished products to the US, I can't find new finished cardboards? Impossible. Why? Because those guys are not going to come here to start their business, but, you know, the distributors, because it makes no sense either. So right now I have to mobilize $3,000 worth of cardboards in my warehouse so that I can have cardboards. And by the way, they won't arrive for another five weeks. In the US, same situation. I place my order by 6 p.m. with Uline. The next day it's delivered by UPS. And I can order one cardboard or 100,000 cardboard. Doesn't matter. I heard stories today, you know. Um, a friend of mine told me, he said he went to... Um, how do you call it? He went to an incubator and they, he saw this company and he felt it was a great company, you know, sanitary pads, reusable sanitary pads. Well, what happens is they can't sell them here in Tanzania. Why? Because um, there is no expiration date on it. Where am I going with these guys? The fact that we are stifled with the most nonsenseless laws out there. That's why we can't run businesses. It's like swimming through molasses. So today, today, so what can you do about that? You know, I told you today that someone said to me words that marked me. The words were, because I explained the same thing to my employees in Senegal, and one of them started crying. Her name is Yahara. She started crying. And I said, why are you crying? She said, I'm crying because I never, I had come to believe, always seeing us represented as poor people, I had come to believe that maybe, yes, maybe we are inferior. Because otherwise, how do you explain that we're always in the begging situation? That's what broke my heart. But at the same time that she said that, because of how I explained just what I explained to you, she said, but now I know that I am not the problem. It is my environment in which I live. That's my problem. I said, yes. And that's what gave me hope, that once people get it, they now change their outlook on life. Here. What are some of the solutions then? If jobs is a solution and we need a good, uh, don't you think then that we should be simplifying the business environment of all of these countries? Don't you think? Yeah. Right. So this morning, the Minister of um, for Foreign Affairs said, well, I give you a challenge, but the challenge is already answered, Minister. We know what it takes. Simplify the, doing, simplify the business environment in your country and Along with you, I would like for all of your friends from the other 50 countries that are at the bottom of that list to do the same thing. You do that, we do the rest of the job. I'm doing my part of the game. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And as for you, everybody here in this room, I leave you with two marching orders. Get in the game. And the way you get in it is educate yourself. Build awareness around yourself, around yourself, and then also advocate for e-government solutions. He said, oh, corruption, how do we fight corruption? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm here to tell you that yes, you can do it by the stroke of a pen. You do not need anyone to tell you when and how to do that. It is one thing actually that you don't need to wait for anyone to do, so do it. Otherwise, don't come and tell me that you want to fix corruption. You and your other 50 friends from the other 50 countries that are at the bottom of that list. That's how you fight corruption, because corruption happens. If you were only charging me 5% to get my stuff in the country, my raw material, instead of 45%, do you really think that I would have to go and pay a bribe? That's what breeds corruption. Bad laws, sets of horrible, nonsense laws. Right? So, you want to fight corruption? That's what you do. And again, remember I told you, you don't need to wait for anyone. You can do that by yourself. Unless you're telling me that maybe you have no sovereignty and then that's a whole other problem, isn't it? Okay. So, with all of that, I will just leave it to you. You know what you have to do. Everybody knows what they have to do. There is no mystery around these guys. None. None. Okay? Anybody tells you that, they're messing with you. No mystery. So from here on, I have... Simple words 
for our leaders. This, will, this can go two ways. It can go the nasty way, because we have hundreds of millions of young people coming to life right now, here, and if you do not, if they don't have an outlook in life, they are going to go for a revolution. They're going to go for violence. And none of, that, none of us wants that. None. None of us. So that's the one way it can go. Or the second way it can go is, all of this happens peacefully, productively, and everything is good, and you do what you need to do, you get out of my way, you let people like me do our job, we create all of these jobs we need, and then everybody, Africa becomes this very prosperous country that is designed to be, it should have been for a long time. It happens like that, everybody's happy, we move on with our lives. It can happen two ways. Pick violence, or you pick uh, the calm, productive way. I want a calm, productive way. None of us should ever, ever, even try to think about what else could happen if we don't go there. So please. And the time has come. We have no more time to mess around with. None! Too many people are coming. That was my message. And I had one, only one picture that I want to leave with. I'm totally over time, so please, this picture is what could happen. This type of picture, prosperity, happiness, human flourishing, that's what I see if we do our job. Thank you. Thank you.